Hello, it's Scott Manley here and I am in one of the most amazing places in the world. This, this magnificent creation, this is Meteor Crater. This is the best preserved crater on the entire planet Earth. It's not the youngest crater, there are younger craters, but the climate of Arizona, the lack of rain here has meant that the crater has basically changed very little in the 50,000 years since it was created. So yeah, roughly 50,000 years ago, a chunk of metallic iron, uh, iron nickel hit. It was probably about 100 to 150 feet across, hit at something like 15 to, or 10 to 15 kilometers per second, uh, depending upon which papers you read. And yeah, blast was equivalent to maybe 10 to 20 megatons. It not blew this thing out of the earth. The crater is about half a mile, just uh, your kilometer wide. It's about 300 meters deep, and this isn't actually as deep as it once was because, of course, even with the limited amount of erosion, this crater has had a lot of sediment sink into the bottom. So, yeah, the crater was known for a while amongst the locals. It was found by a US Army cartographer who called it a big hole, apparently. Uh, later, it was known by various names, the Diablo Canyon Meteorite Crater, the Coon Mountain Meteorite Crater, uh, and currently it's best known as the Barringer Crater because in uh, the early 1900s, a guy called Daniel Barringer, who had made a ton of money mining silver, he was a geologist, and he thought that this crater had been created by an asteroid. And he thought that he would be able to find huge amounts of iron at the bottom. He figured that it would be about a billion dollars worth of iron that he could mine here. Um, he spent 30 years and basically all of his fortune trying to find this asteroid in the ground. And as it happens, as physics learned more about meteorite impacting, it was pretty much realized that the meteor would have been completely obliterated and vaporized by it. Most of the meteor is actually scattered uh, it's either buried deep in the ground or scattered over, you know, six, seven mile radius around this. Uh, this area is actually very special for geologists. Uh, so, it was the first crater that was identified to be an impact crater. This was the PhD work of a guy called Eugene Shoemaker, who is pretty much the father of impact cratering on Earth. Um, he proved that it was an asteroid impact because he looked at the minerals in the crater and he found certain shocked quartz formations, such as cosite and schistevite, uh, which can only be formed using extremely high pressures, the kind of pressures that you get in nuclear blasts. He'd, he'd studied nuclear blast craters previously, and by scaling them up, he kind of got an estimate of how much energy must have gone into the Earth to create this thing. Uh, and of course, once he'd established that, he went around and he found more craters all over the world, again, using these minerals as cues. Uh, he also was one of the first guys to really go out looking for near-Earth asteroids. So what we know about the near-Earth asteroid population, we owe to Gene Shoemaker. Gene Shoemaker um, was responsible for teaching the Apollo astronauts uh, a whole bunch of geology. And the astronauts actually came here to train, and you can see over here, the <laughs> you can see a cutout of an astronaut to get an idea for the people that are way the heck up there. They're way, way up there. Because let me tell you, most people don't get to come into Meteorite Crater. I've got, uh, I've got connections, I guess. I was very, very, very lucky. And I've got to say thanks to the Meteorite Crater, Meteor Crater people. Thanks to B612 for putting this together. Because this is just like the most amazing place for me. It's a an event that happened in a less than 10 seconds and created this thing that stood so beautiful for 50,000 years. Yeah, this is uh, some of the mining gear, incidentally. They, they kept on digging shafts down, and this is the biggest and deepest shaft uh, here. I, I, it goes down several hundred feet, I think. And apparently, apparently in that shaft are the remains of a light aircraft, which one day, uh, an aircraft was flying, uh, well, you know, the pilots were flying, and they thought, let's fly over Meteor Crater. And, yeah, well, uh, because the Meteorite Crater, because of its shape, it kind of traps hot air. And so as soon as they flew over the crater, their wings lost lift. They dipped into the crater, and they were seriously in trouble. So they tried to circle the crater inside, but uh, they couldn't pick up speed, and eventually they stalled. 
and crashed. And thankfully, the crew survived, although the pilot broke his back and he still managed to escape the plane that was on fire. The, there's a, still a piece of it sitting over there somewhere, but uh, they uh, decided to dispose of most of, the, most of the plane because having a crash plane in the crater apparently just made pilots want to fly over the crater more. Go figure. Pilots, strange people. <laughs> but yeah, Meteor Crater, Arizona. Uh, you can come here to the visitor center if you want. They've got some great shows there. They have a chunk off the meteor, which is over a thousand pounds. It's huge and you can touch it and feel the power that it brought to the earth. Obviously it's not moving at 15 kilometers per second, but it's still pretty impressive to see that there. They have a, a boilerplate capsule from the Apollo program. And uh, yeah, it's an interesting place to come if you are in Arizona. And if you love space, you have to come to this place. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.